right, call for today is it's not keeping up once it gets hot out. So I just heard the compressor shut off. Got good heat coming out of here. Looks like it ain't even blown. That feels like it's going backwards. Yeah, something's not right. But it's, I heard the compressor shut off. Let's see if these fans are, they almost look like they're going backwards. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, yeah. That don't help it a whole lot. Look at that. That's nice. So I would say somebody's wired the capacitor wrong on this one. So we'll get that checked out. All right, the filters are definitely a little dirty. Need to get some of those. So otherwise the coil looks fairly clean. Okay, let's check this belt first. That's loose as a goose and not aligned very well so we'll go ahead and get that tightened up okay so going in here following our wires back over they both came up here they both went on the common both on the uh, capacitor and went ahead and checked it. this usually i believe is a 10. so we went ahead and checked the capacitor and shazam it's a whopping 1.2 microfarad came over to the other one it came in a whopping 2.1, so the capacitor is garbage. We'll get that corrected. I'm sure that'll make a difference. I stand corrected. It is five microfarad for each one. So we're going to replace both of those. Check these 4.9 and 5.0. So get those mounted up. So I went ahead and made us up a little crimp here. That's going to jump our common from one to the other. Also got it mounted in there with some metal straps so it won't vibrate around and move around. So that should make a little bit of a difference there. Might as well check our contactors while we're in here. That one don't look too bad. That one don't look too bad either. So go ahead and get this motor tightened up. And then there's usually one hidden back around the back. That one will throw you for a loop. Oops. If you don't know it's there. There we go. Alright, so we got that tightened up. This uh, pulley's cranked all the way as fast as it can go, so we're going to check the amp draw on that, which this is a 460 volt unit, so uh, the amperage on this one here is supposed to be 4.2, I believe. So we're going to check the amperage and see if that's okay. And we can also check our amp draw on our motors there while we're at it, which will probably be right around maybe one or less. Let's see here. Outdoor, 0.8 full load amps. Don't see FLA very often, only see it. Uh, Usually on just a couple different kinds of motors. We'll look it up online, usually through some of the apps, but so let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing running. All right, so before we get started, the coil looks clean on the outside, but it's dirty. And since they had water right there, it's just a given. Might as well get it. Now these, a lot of times, are split. You can see how dirty that water is. It's kind of brown. So we're going to go ahead and wash this out. I don't think it's so bad that I have to split the coil because it's coming through really easy. But I like to wash it out until I get perfectly good, clean, clear water. And then uh, we'll go ahead and run it. So we're going to get that done real quick. At least this is a 410A. Alright, so we got her all cleaned. The Stanley hose has been pretty decent for me. And if you break it, you can actually chop off the back end of it and re reapply it. So basically we've got everything washed out. Got a little bit of dirt out of it, just to say the least, just a little bit of dirt. So we're gonna go ahead and kick this thing on and see what she does. Oh, that's great. I'm hoping that's the thermostat shutting it down. Hoping that's the thermostat. It might have, because it's a 
it's powered by the unit so let's take a peek at our power coming in here looks like 487 to me so no here in a second go in there and double check that thing if you guys don't have one of these keys you're going to need one of them and also you're going to want one of these keys here this does the uh, other type uh, I forget what type it is, but it's a, it's a goofy size. Um, I've got a link for this stuff down in my description down below. But it's in the tool kit. There's three different tool kits. You can check out everything I, that you've seen on the videos. Okay, it just kicked on. Both fans feel like they're blowing the correct direction. Never mind this. This is 60 frames a second. That's why it looks like they're going backwards. I'm gonna go ahead and let her dry off here. So we're checking the blower out, 3.4 amps. They're just with the second compressor. So we're good there, it was rated for 4.2. So we checked the amp draw on the condenser fans, which these are rated at 0.8, and I was coming in at 0.9 on both of them, which ain't a bunch over, both of them are 0.9. So I just noted it on the paperwork that we need to keep an eye on it. We're still waiting for it to stabilize. We're gonna check this uh, refrigerator, make sure it's working okay. Basically, I got it boxed in here. We're sweating on the suction on that one. Not so much on that one, so we're gonna check the pressures on the right compressor. All right, just checking it out. Got about 35 degrees superheat. About 85 out here, so 95, 105, about 20 degrees over ambient. Running a uh, Actually, Superheat's 35, running a 40 degree of app. It's not by off by much, so we're just add a little bit. So when you follow your lines down here, the 85 degree mark coming down, and your suction line pressure, which was 121, kind of about ballpark some of this stuff. You come into your 85, they intersect, comes right into about the 43, 42 ish area. So our suction temperature should be actually 40 some degrees, or 71. I went ahead and hooked up my liquid line to see what my subcooling was. We've only added about four ounces, so we're gonna go ahead and charge this up a little more. Let's see if we can get that checked out, see if we can make it match up to our chart there. And we, right now we're running a 46 degree evap temperature. So if you used to follow the factory's chart here, go off the 85 degree Fahrenheit, come down, follow that right on down, boom, and we are at 133 pounds, so we follow that 85 down, and follow that down, you're somewhere around that 50, 58 area, so T1's 59 degrees, Superheat's around 12, subcooling's 12. I don't think you can ask for better numbers than that. So we're gonna stop there and we added just shy of two pounds. So I'll uh, find out whether we've added refrigerant to this before or not. May have to do a leak search at a later date. Leave that up to the customer. So right now everything's looking pretty good. Just gotta do a temp drop. All right guys, we're gonna let the customer know what we found and let them decide whether they want us to do the uh, leak check or not and we can always come back and do the filters at the same time. If you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Check down in the description. There's links to all my tools and other miscellaneous things, Patreon account, you name it. So until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. All right, you guys seen my video where I was recovering a 410A system and I had to use my little Milwaukee fan to try to cool it down and the uh, uh, cool presser to cool my recovery tank. Well, I've got a little project here I'm working on. One of my viewers gave me an idea and it was pretty uh, common sense and I didn't even think about it. But this is a condenser for a little reach-in that I scavenged uh, from the trash. So I went ahead and brazed on two 3 8 taps onto that. You could have used quarter. Um, so I've got those on there, and right now I'm letting it soak 
Uh, we're going to turn this into a uh, subcooler, basically. I've got a nice little fan that goes on it, and the uh, plate that goes underneath of it, I'm still, still determining whether I want to go with a hook or if I want to use the little base. But the fan happens to be 120 volts, which the recovery machine is too. So that should work out really well. So there's what we got so far. We're just cleaning her out. And I'm sure most of you guys have seen these things already. My feeling is these are the best way to clean a uh, coil. Uh, this thing is the uh, new Calgon coil gun. I've had this thing forever. It's got multiple different settings, mixes it for you, blows it into the coil. And uh, myself, I like using just a regular jet or I had a little bill, uh, duck bill that went on the front, but I lost it. This here loses most of your, uh, your uh, most of your velocity as it's going into the deep coil. So I hardly ever use it. I don't feel as though the foaming really does squat because really it's more of how slippery it makes it. So anyhow, I just thought I would throw that out there. But right now, basically, I was trying to sign this thing up, make her look all pretty again. I tried cleaning it out in my uh, sink in the garage, and it didn't quite get it. So I wanted it to best airflow I could get because I'm trying to cool that stupid 410A refrigerant down and uh, I need it as clean as it can get. And it looks like it's done a halfway decent job. And we may hit it one more time because I've got a little bit left in my bag yet because I still have a little bit left in my bottle here. This is made by Modine, so who knows, it probably is leaking. That's all I can assume. They're right up there with Coleman. I think they're the same company, honestly. So we got her cleaned out. She looks a lot better now. Very nice. Very, very nice. So she's clean. Um, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to put on the fan blade. So we're going to get that back on there. We've got to clean that up a touch too. This is a little bit damaged, but like I said, this thing's just going to be used every now and again when I do 410A recoveries. It's got a few dings in the uh, U-bends here on the side. Right uh, here, which, you know, we could touch those up if we needed to. For the most part, I mean, like I said, this thing was sitting outside in the trash. And uh, it looked kind of cool that I could maybe make it into something. Well, it hasn't happened yet, so might as well as uh, use it for something important. Design pressure is 500 PSI, so eh, that's about the most my uh, recovery machine will run before it trips out. So should be good there on that. My fan blade's a little bit nasty looking, so we're going to take it apart and clean it out because it's got uh, a lot of gunk in it. I don't really want to get my motor wet, so we're going to go ahead and take that, clean that all out. I'm trying to get this fan blade off. It's got uh, some rust on it and things like that, so it should be really nice when I get done.
So here it is. Basically, you've got a 120 volt motor. You got your two ports, hook your recovery machine on one, hook your port going over to your recovery tank on the other. We've got a condenser coil basically ready to go. And I cut the base in half here with the uh, grinder there and gave it a base so it'll hold it. And for the most part, that should protect it. Now I could possibly put a hook up here, build a metal plate across and just how you could hang it somewhere. But I really don't know if that's really needed. Um, the biggest thing is going to be trying to keep the coil not to, uh, try to keep the coil from getting smashed. Uh, we could always put a uh, mesh screen across that possibly, something like the yacht on the air conditioners, and that might help out some. But uh, or you could always put a piece of sheet metal across and then screw on the sheet metal until you need it, and then that would pretty well protect it. Um, but this should help out with the 410A uh, recoveries and stuff. Uh, or anywhere where you've got really high ambient temperatures, which around here it's not usually that bad, but uh, the 410 stuff, it's a, a major issue no matter what. So, um, just a little something. I want to give props to my uh, viewer out there that said something about it. I, you'll have to look up his name. I'll post it down below. But uh, thank you for mentioning that, and I would assume this is going to work pretty good. It's got three passes in the coil here. And uh, I think it's going to work a lot better than my subcooler that I had made previously with the spiraled uh, 3 8 line that gets thrown into a water bucket or an uh, ice bucket. This here should uh, actually do really well and not have to require any extra water or anything like that. So if you guys like this video, it's a shorty, but if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you would, please like, share, and subscribe, and click that notification bell. Don't forget to check down below at the... Don't forget to check down below the notes section. Don't forget to check the notes section for any links to some of the tools that I use in my video. If you'd like to help support the channel, I have that and I have Patreon. Till next time, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. So we've added a plug to it. Like I said, this is 120 volts, and she's got some really good airflow. So it, uh, it's pulling it right through there really well. Like I said, you can see right through this thing plain as day now. And uh, this should be pretty simple to uh, set down and hook up the recovery machine and make a faster recovery without having to screw around with water hoses, ice buckets, or any of the other garbage. <clears throat> so simple, it's scary. But to buy it, obviously, would be very expensive. But if you get lucky like I did and you find it in the trash, you've got really nothing in it. I went ahead and ran some flush through it that I had left over. And purged it out a few times with nitrogen. So it's perfectly clean so we won't be contaminating the system. We'll put a uh, screw on flare dryer on the uh, incoming to the machine and then on the way back into the other and then use it on the outgoing side of the recovery machine going back into, or I should say, and then we'll reverse the dryer then we'll use a dryer for when it goes back into the unit if I have to reuse it. I've got to go back and do that 25 ton unit yet, so we're going to be able to try this out then. We'll see how well it does. That'll be the real test. And to help protect it as it's riding around in the van, I went ahead and made me a little sheet metal cover here. It basically has bent edges on the outside and a little flap there. Got some 45s at the bottom, so all you've got to do is take it over to your coil like this. And boom, just shove her down, she's protected, she's good to go. So you just give her a little smack and that covers it up sheet metal to sheet metal. So she's protected and uh, shouldn't get busted or anything. So it works out kind of well, I think. Not bad for, uh, you know, a uh, garbage recovery. Garbage, re HVAC garbage recovery. <sighs> Let's actually call it something else. This has been an HVAC recovery HVAC garbage rehab. This has been an HVAC HVAC garbage recovery unit. So where we go. And it wouldn't be complete without the official sticker there. The 2020 HVAC recovery subcooler. So anyhow. It may be other people's junk, but it's going to be my sub cooler. Might be other people's junk, but it's going to be the HVAC recovery. 
Might be other people's junk, but this is my HVAC recovery subcooler. It's definitely a little bit larger than my other subcooler I had here, but like I said, not having to mess with water or ice is going to make it a lot better for me. So, anyhow, we're going to just uh, probably take this off the van because I haven't used it but probably two or three times. But it is convenient that, you know, it didn't uh, to eat up a whole lot of room. Uh, this, however, I think I could either mount it up on the ceiling or on one of the shelves. I ain't sure yet. This actually works really well. It should hold in place right here in front of my rack with all my other refrigerants. So it's kind of strapped in place, doesn't eat up no real room, fits right in here between my toolboxes. So I think that's going to work out really well for me. Yeah, so it should fit in there pretty well. Basically, it's not in my way or anything like that, so that should work out great.